We are now going to talk about the distribution of a sampling proportion using the central limit theorem, and we'll see how it works with a proportion. A proportion means the percent of the population that has a particular characteristic. We're going to describe the sampling distribution of a sample proportion, and we're then we're going to calculate the probabilities for a sample proportion. Let's talk about this. In an election, the polling companies wish to estimate the percent of people who will vote for each candidate. And you will notice that this is relevant to what's going on now in New York City. We're going to vote for a new mayor. This clearly is a situation for sampling, as it is impractical to contact every single registered voter. The desired results are proportions. For example, 59% of the voters, which is a proportion of 5,900, that they will vote for candidate A. We have the same questions for the sampling proportion as we had for the sample mean. What's the mean of a sample proportion? What's the standard deviation of the sample proportion? What's the distribution of the sample proportion? Can we apply the central limit theory to approximate these normal distributions? Well, the answer for these questions is a definitive yes. Sample proportions. A random sample is taken. First, we take size n. Each individual of the population has or does not have a certain characteristic. In total, there are x individuals that have the characteristic we are looking for. So the sample proportion, which we call p hat, is given by x, those people in the who have the characteristic, divided by the sample size n. If a polling company polled 800 people to see if they supported a certain issue, and 475 did, then we have a sample proportion problem where n is the 800, x is the 475, that's the number of people with that characteristic. Therefore, the p hat is 475 divided by 800, and that tells us that 59% of the sample has the given characteristic. If the population proportion is p, then the distribution of the sample proportion for a sample of size n is approximately normal if it turns out that n times p times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. We say the mu, or the mean of the population proportion, or the mu of p hat, is approximately the same as the mean of the population proportion. And the standard deviation, the sigma of the p hat, is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by the sample size, which is n. Well, here is our learning objectives. We're going to describe the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. And then we're going to calculate probabilities for a sample proportion. Well, here's our problem. Let's assume that 80% of the people taking aerobics classes are females. And a simple random sample of 100 students is taken. What is the probability that at most 75% of the sample are females? If this sample has exactly 90 female students, would that be unusual? So we have two different situations to deal with. Well, first we have to determine, is the distribution approximately normal? Now, since the sample size was 100 and the population proportion is 80%, to determine if it's approximately normal, we use the formula of n times p times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10. So the sample size of 100 times the 80% times 1 minus the 80% gives us 100 times 80 tenth, times 8 tenths times 2 tenths. We go to our calculators and we realize that 16. since 16 is greater than or equal to 10, we can say that the distribution is approximately normal. Since the distribution is approximately normal, we then have to calculate the standard deviation for p hat which means we take the 80% times 1 minus p divided by n, the square root of that. So that gives us 80 times 20% divided by 100, which is 16 hundredths divided by 100, which gives us the square root of 16 ten thousandths, which is equal to 4 hundredths. So 
Again, let's summarize. The sample proportion p hat of aerobic students who are females has an approximately normal distribution. It has a mu x bar of p hat, which means the mean is 80%, and a standard deviation of 4 hundredths. Now we want to determine what's the probability that p, that p hat is 75 hundredths or less. Now, since 75 hundredths is 5 hundredths less than the mean of 8 hundredths, of 80, of 8 tenths, excuse me, that means that 5 hundredths is 1 and 25 hundredths of a standard deviation less than the mean, so the z-score is 1 and 25 hundredths. Looking at our z-table, the probability that the z is less than 1 and 25 hundredths of a standard deviation less than the mean is 0.1056, so therefore, the probability that p hat is less than or equal to 75 hundredths is 1.1056. Now, since we know that the sample proportion is approximately normal and has a mean of 8 tenths and a standard deviation of 4 hundredths, we want to find out one more thing. What's the, prob what's the probability that p hat would be 90% or more? Now again, since 90% is one-tenth more than eight-tenths, that tells us that one-tenth is two and five, two and five-tenths of a standard deviation more than the mean, because remember we take 0.9 minus 0.8 divided by the 0 0.04. That gives us two and five-tenths. The probability that z is greater than 2 and 5 tenths, you look that up on the table, subtract the area from 1, because we're looking at the right-hand tail which is greater than 2 and 5 tenths is 0 0.0062. So the probability that p hat is greater than 2 and 5 tenths is 0 0.0062, or 62 hundredths of a percent of the time, which is pretty unlikely. All right, let's summarize. The sample proportion, like the sample mean, is a random variable. If the sample size n is sufficiently large and the population proportion p isn't close to either 0 or 1, the distribution is approximately normal. The mean of the sample distribution is equal to the population proportion p, and the standard deviation of p hat is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n.